is one of the heavy hitters in the electric scooter space, with the Apollo Ghost being one of the most sought after scooters for around $2,000. Today I have one of their newest models called the Apollo City Pro. The Apollo City has two options as far as power and therefore speed. The City, which is the smaller brother to the Pro, has one 500 watt motor with a top speed of around 27 miles per hour and costs $300 less than the City Pro, which has dual motors and a top speed of 32 miles per hour. Eco is 16, two is 20, three is 29. Well, I didn't hit 32 miles per hour, but I came close 28, 29. Uh, that's what you can expect if you're around my weight of 185 pounds. Now in the app, there's the option to limit the speed. For the first test, I had it set to the max. Now I'm gonna set it to its lowest level and run that test again. One is now five, two is six, and three is nine. One more thing about speed that I think is worth mentioning is the ability to set the cruise control of when you want it to kick on. At the shortest time, it kicks on in about two seconds. And when it is activated, hitting the levers does not disengage. You have to hit the regen brake. All right, I'm cruising, I heard the beep. I hit the drum brakes, I slow down, but as soon as I release, that motor kicks back in. So the only way to get rid of the uh, cruise control is to hit the e-brake, or you can just tap the throttle. The Pro has two options for acceleration that you can change in the app from levels one to 10, which will change how poppy the scooter is off the line. It's hard to tell which is fastest from that point of view, so here's an overlay. There is a small delay when you set it to level one, but once the motor kicks in, it quickly makes up for lost time. Off the line, hit it. Ooh, okay. Takes uh, you know, half a second for it to get going, but once it does, then it just <laughs> it goes. And there was a little spin in the front tire once that power did kick on. And then just cruising around 15 miles an hour, if I release it, power instantly cuts off, which is nice, re-engage. About a half a second delay, the same as before, before the power comes back on. From a standstill with the set to the highest level, here we go. Ooh, that tire peeled out for about 10 feet. That has got a nice acceleration. As soon as you hit that throttle, it goes. And then again, cruising around 15 miles per hour, release it, power cuts off, re-engage. Ooh, and it kicks back on. The climbing power of most scooters in this price range can tackle a 15% grade hill at about 15 miles per hour. Got a full charge, the highest speed mode. You're down to 10. Man. There's like zero noise coming from the motor back up to 11, coming up close to the top at 12, and there you go. I dipped down to 10 miles per hour, so a little slow for this class of scooters, but the motor sounded good, and I felt like I had the power to tackle something steeper. This is where the Pro begins to separate itself from the competition. First, you got two standard brake levers that are hooked up to drum brakes, which gives the quickest stopping power of around 15 feet from going 21 miles per hour. So with the drum brakes, the right side controls the front, the left side the rear. This is the first scooter I've seen with an individual regen brake that is smooth enough and powerful enough where I don't have to use the levers. And you can change the strength of the regens in the app from levels one to 10. Here's the difference between the two regen levels from going 21 miles per hour. Not really a huge difference, but the nice thing is just how powerful and smooth they are. I stopped in 25 feet from going 21 miles per hour. Now before I move on, let me give you one last look with some overlapping video of the two regen levels and the drum brake. There's so many good things about the Pro, is range one of them? It's actually not bad. I average 21 miles per hour in 38 degree weather with about a handful of stops. And my app recorded 22.35 miles with 532 feet of elevation gain. Typically in cooler weather, I lose about five miles. So in warmer weather, I think you could hit around 30 miles. The first thing, this is foldable. It has a quick release in the front. Folds down pretty quick, actually. There's a place here near the fin where you just connect the hook to. Doesn't weigh that much, 65 pounds. 
can carry a rider up to 265. So as far as geometry, and that's I'm 5'11", handlebar height is nice and high. I can reach past the grips about nine inches. You got a high deck, and so your center of gravity is a little bit higher, but yet you still have pretty good balance. As far as balance goes, going 20 miles per hour, I can easily take my hand off the handlebars. Now they are moving around a little bit because the road's bumpy, but I very much well feel in control. It is nicely balanced. And then going full out, there is zero stem wobble. That is one of the most sturdy scooters I felt for hitting almost 30 miles per hour. That is awesome. You got a huge handlebar length on this. For that wide of a stance and this light of a frame, handling control is very easy. And now as far as handling, uh, my tires are wet because I've been hitting some puddles on this. So I don't really want to get too gnarly with it, but it is a lighter scooter and it's just very easy to manage. And so if you want something that's just lightweight where you can bunny hop it, go off a curb, you know, kind of rough it around a little bit. This can take that sort of abuse. The deck is wider up front, narrow in the back. I wish it was a little bit longer. You know, maybe another one or two inches there. I just like to spread my feet out a little bit more, especially with something this fast. But there's a nice silicone rubber pad on that. So you got nice traction. Now, if you pick this up, you're gonna love the tires. They're just a higher grade quality. They're tubeless as well, 10 inches big. I had zero vibration in the eyes when on sidewalks or on Chipsill Road. And then you got a triple spring suspension system. In the rear, there's two. In the front, just a single one. And that suspension is pretty awesome. You know, you got some nice travel there. You can take this off curves. You can hit bigger bumps. It's not gonna rattle you around. And you actually feel very much in control when hitting some of those bigger bumps. Then as far as the LCD screen, on the right is the, uh, that's how you turn it on. Right and left arrows for the blinkers, which is kind of cool. Then just hit it again to turn them off. The Pro has an IP66 waterproof rating, a one year warranty, and free shipping in the lower 48. All right guys, well my favorite feature with the Apollo City Pro has got to be just the smooth and comfortable ride. One of the most comfortable rides for a scooter in this price range. I also love the Regen brakes. They're smooth, they're strong, they're powerful. I think these guys have created something special and unique and I'm just glad I had the opportunity to share it with you. Now, if you still need help in deciding which scooter is right for you, I think my website will help you out. I reviewed 15 other scooters in the thousand to $2,000 price range. So you got a few brands to compare the Pro to. So that's it. Thanks for watching and take care. Well, hi, puppy. Keep being sweet. Yeah.